So first of all, I want to ask you, how was it for you, you know, to go through this journey back in time? Was it weird or, I mean, how does it feel for you, you know, to um, watch it, your story unfold in this documentary? It's interesting and weird to see yourself grow up on camera. I mean, it really does. From where we were young, to be able, not too many people, I've never uh, thought I could see myself 40 years of living with the same guys that I love and, and work with, you know? Uh, so blessed and pleasantly surprised. And I'm glad we, we uh, you know, we were able to do something that we could share with our fans that's really about us. I think it was awesome. You know, to look at what Gotham uh, Chopra did and find all that footage and put the story in that order, it was just, uh, it's, it's mind boggling, the amount of uh, footage that he found. And then when you see it all, you're like, wow, we had a, we had a lot of, we did a lot of stuff in 40 years. A good ride. Yeah. <laughs> really a lot, I can tell. And one of the words I, I can, I kind of heard the most in this documentary was legacy. And I guess it's, they made a documentary about this band. It, it's the right word to use. But I want to ask you from your perspective and speaking about the soundscape of the band, which is for you the most important aspect of the legacy of Bon Jovi. Um, to me, it's that we're still creating, that we're still, you know, that we're older, more mature, but we get, we still get to be 16 and play music that we love and share with our fans because, uh, you know, without an audience, you're just making it for your, for your own house, you know, so it's, um, I think we're blessed to be able to still do that. That's the legacy. And uh, I mean, this documentary is kind of interesting because watching your story, you kind of see how the society changed. And I guess you're one of the few bands that kind of went through the web streaming. You know, the first two episodes of the documentary are all live shows and the last two are about streaming, live viewing. So I want to ask you, for you, which was the secret that, I don't know, how did you manage to go through this? What is the strength of Bon Jovi as a band? I think you just do it because you, you, you can't look into the future, you know. So, I mean, the, the, we came out in 1984, we recorded the record in 83, and, the, you know, the first computer, an Apple computer was 1984. So, you know, technology was, that was the new thing. So, you know, we, we saw that and embraced that. And I think anything that, that came our way, that, you know, uh, you know the, the journey was a long and winding road, to use uh, Paul McCartney's words. And... And definitely long and definitely winding. You know, so many different things, you know, from there was no such thing as the internet. There was no such thing as a cell phone. There was no social me media. There was, you know, social nothing. There was social gatherings. You know, people said, hey, hi, how are you? And I think we just rolled with the punches, as they say. And we just kept being true to ourselves, made great records went out to every show and kicked everybody's butt every time and worked as hard as we could everywhere on the planet. I was so excited to watch so many live show footage, you know. I mean, live show, I guess it's one of the strength of Bon Jovi because at the beginning kind of create your sound and now you see live show as a way to hug your public. So I want to ask you how much, you know, this aspect is important for you, how much even change, you know, the function of the live show dimension for Bridget Rovi as a band. I think we played so many shows. Like, there's no yeah. substitute for playing, right. you know, if you, and, and you become such a tight-knit unit, you know, and so many of those, you know, developed our sound, developed everything that we had. So, I mean, it's just by repetition. You know, it says over and over and over and over and over again. And every time you learn and, and, and you learn when something breaks, you know, the monitors blow up and you can't hear. Well, you can't just go, okay, sorry, we can't play right now. You know, you work through that. You work through all the, the difficult times and then uh, which makes you appreciate the easier times. So I think, you yeah. know, it's the balance of the journey. Yeah, and we grew up in New Jersey where you work, where all the bands from New Jersey worked as hard as they can to get win over an audience and make the audience part of our show, which is really a key to Bon Jovi. Is ever since the beginning, you're part of our show. We 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 can't do it without you. We need you to sing with us, clap with us, dance with us, and that's what always made it really uh, special to us playing every night was our audience, and still is.
one last question about the upcoming album. I guess I read on the notes that it's kind of we album. So I want to ask you how does it feel for you and what represents in your career? I think uh, if you listen to Legendary, the first single, it has a spirit to it. You know, there's a lot of positivity in there. And we went into a room and we bash it out. You know, you, there's nothing like looking at each other in the eyes and playing it. And then there's this, uh, you know, the sum of the whole is greater than the parts. This whole magic happens. And you know that when it happens like that. And it was very magical in that kind of way. Just went in there and bashed it out. And, and, and the spirit of it is, uh, is joy. Mm. When you do a record and it's easy to do, easy because it falls together, it's very reminiscent of Slipper and Wet was, you know, because it just had a natural synergy to it. And this record has that. So I think the fans are going to love this because we like it. It's yours now. <laughs>